<laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, to stay at the top and meet the competition of the underworld's keenest minds, the shadow has to be still better than any of them. And it's the same way with tires. For years, Goodrich Silvertowns have given motorists the real blowout protection of the golden fly. Now, like a true champion, Goodrich offers another important safety feature. The amazing new lifesaver tread that gives you the quickest non-skid stops you've ever had. This new tread is specially designed to overcome the hazard zone of motoring, where a slippery film of water on the road may make complete command of your car almost impossible. Its never-ending spiral bars sweep the water right and left, force it out through the deep groove, make a dry track for the rubber to grip. Wouldn't you be thankful for a tire like that the next time you're faced with a wet road emergency? Put Goodrich Silvertowns on your car now. The Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard. His true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, Murder on Approval. Dr. Kalanja. I have read your statement. Yes? Frankly, I am interested. I thought you would be, General. Otherwise, I never would have traveled so many thousand miles to see you. You say that you can infect a large number of persons with a deadly disease at will. Yes. That you can cause more deaths in an army than all the guns in the world. Your Excellency, once let loose, this disease would totally destroy an enemy's morale. With its aid, you can easily overcome any nation in the world. The General is already a ruler of the East. But he will not stop with his conquest. I am sure his excellency is planning to extend his powers even further. I can give him victory. What is this sickness you can spread, doctor? I am sorry. That I cannot divulge at this time. Uh, nor the method of infecting the enemy, doctor. Nor that, your excellency. And only I know the cure. Dr. Colanza, your name is not unknown to us. You have been many things. Scientist, adventurous, spy. But you've not always been successful. No. General, may I suggest that you let me try an experiment on troops of your own choosing? Troops? I cannot sacrifice my men. If your disease is fatal... Not on your own soldiers, sir. But why not those of some other power? That is an idea. Soldiers of some country would be glad to humiliate and hurt. Perhaps even in vain. But we are not at war at this present time, Doctor. Does that matter? General, pick any spot in the world, any well-guarded garrison. And in two months, I shall have wiped out that garrison. Choose this spot for my experiment. But perhaps it would be better to choose some country you are interested in, yes? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm. All right. We will select your guinea pig. Captain, the map. Yes, sir. Here's the map. Alanza, do you know this spot on the coast of the United States? Mm, no, but uh, that does not matter. It is one of their army bases. A splendid choice, General. It is well guarded, Doctor. All the better to prove my point. I will leave for America at once. In a short time, 
many American soldiers will die in their barracks. Then, if you wish me to destroy the whole army of the United States, I can do it for you. Good. Captain, you will make the arrangements with the good doctor, please. To purchase his little method for murder on approval. <laughs> Time. I like the army. So I've noticed, Margot. I think you've danced with every officer at the base. Well, why not, Lamar? <laughs> the poor boys are due back inside the post at midnight. Awfully glad you could come tonight, Miss Lane. I don't get away from the base often myself. You'd be surprised at the trouble a couple of thousand men can manage to get into. Uh huh. Trouble, Colonel? Yes, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Yesterday, what should crop up but some new fangled disease? Oh, a new disease? Nothing serious, I hope. Well, nobody seems to know much about it. Fortunately, there are only a couple of cases. Dr. Harris isolated the sick men immediately, so the rest of us should be safe enough. Have I met Dr. Harris, Colonel? I think so. He's around someplace with a foreign doctor. Yes, the stocky red-faced officer coming this way. Oh, Harris promised to introduce his guest. Uh, evening, Dr. Harris. Good evening, sir. Miss Lane, Dr. Nicholas Harris. How do you do? We met at dinner, Doctor. Oh, yes, yes, Mr. Benson. Uh, Colonel, may I present my friend, Dr. Vigo Colanson? You're welcome, Dr. Colanson. Thank you, Sandra. Oh, Lamont, shall we down? Oh, I'd love it, Margot. Will you excuse us, Sandra? Oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. Oh, certainly. Oh, well, how are those boys in the hospital, Doctor? Well, they seemed a little better when I left them. Good. Uh, get him to tell you about that, Dr. Colanson. A couple of soldiers have caught some strange disease. Really? Yes, seems so. They're pretty sick, too. Oh, sorry, my wife is looking for me. I'll see who they Yes. That's quite amusing. What? You are to tell me about this strange new disease. Not so loud. Oh, nonsense. There's nothing to fear. No one knows anything about us, Harris. Unless you have done some talking. Is it likely I'd go around telling people that I was betraying my country? You are being well paid. I know that... Nothing can happen, Harris. The disease is unknown. It strikes very quickly. And it is fatal. Within a week. No, I had no idea when we started that I was handling the powerful Germans. That's why I insisted on shooting antitoxin into you. Without it, we would both get the disease. No, I wish it were over. Oh, don't worry. In a few days, it will be. And you'll be a rich man, Harris. Yes, rich. <laughs> After all these years in the army. You broke the little glass bottles as I instructed? Yes, I dropped one of them in the barracks tonight just before I came away. There are enough germs in those bottles to kill a regiment. You will have some new cases shortly. Be careful. Here comes one of the lieutenants. Doctor. Doctor, have you seen Colonel Collins? Why, yes, yes, he's right over there. Oh, yes. You better come along, sir. You'll be needed. There's trouble at the base. Trouble? Yes, hurry, sir. That our plan is going smoothly, Harris. Be quiet, will you? So come on over to Colonel Tom. Get me inside, the base. All right, all right. I'll keep quiet. Colonel Tom. Yes. From the base, sir. Urgent. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. Let's have it. Yes, sir. Let me see. Uh, good Lord. What is it, sir? A whole barracks has come down with that confounded disease, Harris. Two hundred men. Uh, pretty bad, sir. It's an epidemic, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. General order. All officers must report back to post immediately. Emergency. Yes, sir. The base is already under quarantine, sir. Good. Announce the recall from the bandstand. Right away, sir. Oh, uh, Colonel, perhaps Dr. Kalanza could give us a hand. We're going to need every doctor we can get. I would be delighted, Colonel. Well, very kind of you, sir. Oh, it's right, Colonel. Uh, Cranston, you'll have to drive us back at once. The base is hit by an epidemic, sir. Oh, an epidemic? Yes. Will you have room for Dr. Harris and Dr. Salanza? Uh, Dr. Harris. Yes? Okay. Have you any idea what this mysterious disease might be? Well, unfortunately, no. 
That's why I brought Dr. Colangelo along. From the symptoms described, this is something entirely new in medical science. We've got to save those men and check the disease. I'll do my best, sir. This thing has spread very rapidly, Doctor. It, it might almost be some new form of oriental plague. Oriental plague? Here? In the United States? Oh, nonsense. Well, Doctor, I've seen disease spread like wildfire in the Far East. No. I'd like to take a look at this, Colonel. Well, I'm afraid that's impossible, Mr. Hanson. Well, why, Harris? The post has been quarantined by General Order, sir. You can't ignore that order. But Colonel's just going in. Yes. I am a doctor, Mr. Cranston. And besides, Mr. Cranston, you might catch the disease. Well, I, I don't mind taking that chance. Well, that's very brave of you, sir, but I'm afraid we can't allow it. The order is definite quarantine against civilians. Yes, I'm afraid the doctor's right, Lamont. In the army, orders are orders. Well, what do you say, sir? So it is it's just around the bend, Miss Lane. Pull up alongside right. the gate. You are right here, Miss Lane. All right. Here we are. Off. Who goes there? Colonel Dolan. Advance to recognize, Colonel Well, thanks for the lift, Lamont. You don't mention it. Come on, Dr. Salenzo. Hurry. I am ready. Good night, Miss Lane. Good night, gentlemen. I still wish you'd let me go in and take a look around. Well, I'm afraid that's out of the question entirely, Mr. Cranston. Uh, come on, Cranston. Coming. It's nice of you to offer, my boy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Colonel. I suppose we might as well drive back to the hotel. Good a moment, Margo. I'm getting out here. Getting out here? But Lamar... I'm going to take a look at this disease, Margo. There was a queer look on Kalanza's face when I mentioned it might have an oriental origin. Yes, but the sentries won't let you in, Lamont. The place is quarantined. I have a very hard time quarantining a shadow. Lamont, you mean you're going in there as the shadow? Yes, Margot. When the car door slams, I shall immediately become the shadow. Who's that? Say. Hey. Now, wait a minute, Miss. Oh, wait. Well... You want something, soldier? Why, I I just heard the car door slam. Somebody get out? <laughs> you don't see anybody, do you? No. No, ma'am, but I I thought I saw... Well, I guess it's all right. That's kind of funny. Hey, Joe! Yeah? I could have sworn I saw somebody get out of that car. Anybody go through the gate? Hey, there's enough floodlights here to light up the entire army. I didn't see a soul. I don't know. I thought I saw a man, and then just like that, there wasn't anybody there. Uh, you must be getting punchy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, while we leave the shadow for a moment, just put yourself in this picture. You're driving along in the rain. The road ahead looks safe, even though it is plenty wet. But suddenly you flash past that familiar warning sign, Road Slippery When Wet. Beware. Look out for skids. Will the tires on your car slip or grip? And motorists, your tires will grip wet roads if they're the new Goodrich Silver Towns with Lifesaver Tread. This fact was proved not alone by Goodrich, but by the nation's largest independent testing laboratory. The noted Pittsburgh Testing Laboratory. The impartial engineers of this great laboratory tested the new Silvertown for three months against both the regular and premium price tires of America's six largest tire manufacturers. And here are the results. They found that no other tire tested, not even those priced at from 40% to 70% more than Silvertowns, came up to the new Silvertown in skid resistance. Furthermore, they found that this Silvertown gave more non-skid mileage than any of the other tires tested in its own price range. In fact, it averaged 19.1% more mileage before the tires wore smooth, which is the same as saying you'll get every six mile free. And remember, motorists, many tires cost more than Silvertowns, but no other tire at any price can give you lifesaver tread skid protection and the famous golden ply blowout protection. Equip your car with these life saving silver towns now. Broken <laughs> glass. Glass. 
Oh, yes, he did. 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 Yes, Open glass. Steve. Steve, can you hear me? Listen to me. Who, who is it? Oh, someone there? You must tell me something, Steve. It's important. Where are you? I can't see. Don't I... worry. Even if you can't see me. There's only a voice. I... I'm here, Steve, here in the shadows. Listen to me. Listen. Quickly, before the people return. Why do you keep repeating the word? Broken glass. Broken glass. Yes. Keep saying it over and over. Why? I don't know. I think, Steve. <laughs> think. What is that about broken glass? Glass. glass. Think, glass. son. Glass. Broken glass. Oh. oh, I know. Yes? Yes, last night in the barracks. When, when all the fellows were asleep, yes, I, I woke up. I thought I heard something. Like glass breaking. In the room, Steve? Yes. Yes. Just a little tinkle. Like someone had dropped a tiny glass. And then a few hours later, we, we were all sick. I... <laughs> oh, my head. Who broke glass? <laughs> all right. Got you all right. That was quite bad. One of the new ones. Great Scott. What is it? What's the matter? Oh, my head. Why, this boy, he's, he's my nephew. Oh, God, nephew. Yes, my sister's son, Steve. Yes, Steve. Steve, how do you feel, boy? <laughs> Unfortunate, Harris. Well, I thought he was home on leave. He wasn't due back this week. Is, is he taking the ill, Colanza? To that, Harris. I give him two days of morning. No, 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 he I can't am, die. I am sorry, but it is unavoidable. Uncle Nick, Uncle Nick help me. Colanza, you've got to do something for him. Nothing can be done. Steve. Steve, it's Uncle Nick, Steve. I'm here. Uncle Nick. Oh, help. Please. Glad. The boy is delirious, Harris. But save him. Impossible. There is no cure. But Steve is my nephew. Steve. He's quiet, you fool. Come, let us go to your office. No, 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 I must stay here. Come up, I have to drag you. Now, brace up, Harris. Don't lose your chair. Come on, man. Broken glass. Oh, Uncle Nick. Someone broken glass. Yes, Steve. <laughs> Someone broke glass. And I mean to learn just what your Uncle Nick had to do with it. He and Gregor Kalanza. <laughs> You've got to do something for Steve. What can I do? I told you the disease was taken. I don't care about the others. Steve's different. He's my sister's son. Oh, you said. I am sorry. Kalanza, tell me. Isn't there some sort of serum? No. But you gave me antitoxin. That was for the event you are catching the fever. It is different. Your nephew is already infected. There is no hope now. There's got to be. Harris, pull yourself together. You are being well paid. I know, but money won't give Steve back to my sister. I told you I was sorry. There is nothing to be done. Nothing. I am going back to the ward. The progress of the disease is very good. Oh, don't be so callous. I am a scientist, Harris. Now, get hold of yourself, man. Remember, a soldier died this morning. It is murder now. Murder? Yes. And death is the penalty for that. So you'd better keep quiet about it. I will see you later. Oh, come on, sir. Later. Here's a text 
too, if you want it, Dr. Harris. All right, put it down, man. Put it down. Yes, sir. Now, leave me alone. I've got to find the film that will counteract the effect of this fever. Yes, sir. Good luck, sir. Mm. Let's see, where's, where's that culture? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, now, now, this formula will only work. All right, Dr. Harris. Steve is dying. Oh, yeah. oh, you. You dropped your test tube, Doctor. Just the way you dropped one in the barracks. Spread the germ. You know that. But I didn't. I didn't. Tell the truth, Doctor. Think of Steve. Oh, you fiend. Will you leave me alone? I must find a serum that will cure him. Only Gregor Kalanza can give you that in time. Who is he? Where's he from? Uh, I don't know anything about him. Kalanza, more to you than your nephew. Speak, man. Kalanza got you into this, didn't he? And now Steve is dying. Dying, Harris. Stop dying. it. Stop it. I tell you, I can't stand it. Let me out of here. Get in. That voice coming from nowhere. Always in my ear. Oh, I'm going crazy. Where's my bag? I've got to get away. Leave Steve dead behind you, Doctor. How did you get in here? I'm with you all the time, Doctor. Oh, please. Go away. Please leave me in peace. There is no peace, Doctor, for a man who will let his nephew die in agony. Oh, I'd save him if I could. Believe me, but I. I don't know how. Alanza knows. But he says there's no cure. You believe him? He had an antitoxin, didn't he? Perhaps he has a serum that will cure the disease once it's developed. But he told me... He got you into this crime, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he promised me wealth. I've always been poor. Why did he pick this army based for his crime? Because if he's successful, it means the entire army will be wiped out in this way. United States Army? Yes. This disease would wipe out whole armies. Then invasion would be a simple matter. But you can't isolate the germ. There's no cure. There must be a cure. Kalanza would have one. But he says there is none. There must be. Make him tell you what it is. Otherwise, your nephew dies. But I can't help him. Or this country, either. Steve is dying, and you're afraid to cost the one man who might cure him. What is Kalanza compared to your sister's son? He got you into this. Make him help you. Uh, all right. All right, yes. Yes, I will. Oh, hurry. He's out there now. Watching the soldiers die. Watching Steve and the other men he's poisoned. And enjoying it, Harris. Enjoying it. I'll, I'll get him to my office. And make him give me that serum. That's it. I'll make him. Hurry, Doctor. Hurry. Now you'd be crazy, too, if that, if that thing followed you around all day. That thing? What are you talking a about? A voice, Kalanta. A voice. Something that you can't see, but you can hear him all right. He keeps talking, talking. Oh, Harris, snap out of I tell you, I heard him. He knows all about you and me and the disease. Who knows all this? That voice, the voice. He knows everything. Oh, ah, not dreaming. Seeing your nephew sick of the factory. Yes. We, we made my nephew, Stephen, get the disease, Kalanta. Well... He is not the only one. But he's got to be cured. Oh, no, don't stop that again. There isn't any cure. You're lying. Harris, don't be a fool. I can't afford Then to. there is a serum that will cure the disease. And what if there is? I am not wasting it on your precious neck. Oh, yes, you are. Harris, put down that gun. You listen to me, Kalanza. Either you give me the formula for that serum or I'll kill you. I mean it. The formula is worth a fortune, Harris. It will make us both rich. If you would only use your head. Never mind the talk. Don't try reaching for your gun, either. I'm watching you. But the formula for the serum, quick. All right. Where is it? In my pocket. It never leaves my wallet. Give it to me. Oh, just a minute. Here. Yeah. Take it. Ah, thanks. Now I can save Steve. Do you know enough medicine to read that formula? I must read it. I must read it. 
There. Yes, it's plain enough. I can make this serum. Look. It says you take it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Fool. Did you think I really meant to have you get my serum? Die like the others. Now. No, I'll take that paper, Calanza. What? Who snatched that paper? I did, Dr. Calanza. A voice. Harrison's voice. Dr. Harris was quite right. Give me back my formula. I'll shoot. What will you shoot at, Doctor? You better not shooting, Calanza. Throw your hands. Senator Harris, drop that gun. Never. Take it, then. Calanza's dead, Colonel. If a man deserved to be shot, it's that murderer. Yes. Yes. Take the formula to the laboratory. Sir, made up in a hurry. Well, what about you, Shadow? My work is finished, Colonel. First is up to your medical staff. Calanza and Harris dreamed of power and wealth to be acquired through mass murder. Such dreams are dearly bought. The price of Calanza's dream and Harris's traitorship was death. The hidden menace to the armed strength of our country has been uncovered and destroyed. <laughs> You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> all the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Oh.